All right, here we go. You've been learning about curve sketching, uh, finding maximums and minimums, concavities, inflection points, and all that good stuff. And this is a, a little nook or cranny, a very popular AP style question about absolute extrema values. Extrema, if you're not aware, is really a fancy way of saying an extreme value, and a maximum or a minimum is an extreme value. So we're using the same very cooperative equation we used in an earlier video. There would be the first derivative, and I'm making a small change. In the earlier video, this right endpoint was not included. It was a soft endpoint or an open circle. We're going to include it. And when I look at this graph, which you realize you wouldn't have in a real situation, I can see minimum maximum, another minimum, and another maximum. So the absolute extrema are the dominant extrema. So between this maximum and this maximum, this one is the dominant one because it's the greater one. It's higher up there. So this is the absolute extrema or the absolute maximum. This is still a maximum, but it would be called a relative maximum. This is a minimum. This is also a minimum. This is the absolute minimum because it is the lowest minimum. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about absolute extrema values. Now to find one and to justify it and get full credit on an AP style test, you're going to have to follow their procedure so here we go. The question would be, I'm just making up a question for this scenario, what is the maximum value of f of x over that interval? Well, the maximum value means the highest y value it could ever take on, which we know because we have this secret cheating picture, is whatever that y value is. But we've got to figure out that, and we also have to use this AP style. I use this little uh, memory device called CCCC, that if you follow this memory device, you will get all the AP rubric partial credit no matter what, assuming you're doing the math right. So these four C's stand for candidates, compute, compare, conclude, and what that means will become evident as we go through here. I know I'm looking for the maximum value, so I need to first of all start off with who are the, what are the candidates that might lead to the maximum value? Because remember, I wouldn't see this graph. I would only have this thing. So here's what I do for the candidates. For the candidates, I always have to list the endpoints. So negative 4 and 5 are both endpoints, so I need to include negative 4 and 5 as candidates. What this is saying is I think the maximum value, the absolute maximum value, might occur at negative 4 or 5. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. And I also have another candidate because during this process that we learned earlier, filling out the first derivative number line, I realize that negative 3 is also a maximum. So I have three candidates. This one, because I know it was going to be a maximum, because my function's going uphill, then downhill, then uphill, and the two endpoints. Now I know what you might be thinking. You're thinking, why do I write down x equals negative 4 as a candidate? when my first derivative number line shows me that it's not going to be a maximum in the first place? Well, the answer is because the AP test writers want you to do that. So just know that candidates include endpoints and any maximums that would apply because it's a maximum problem. All right, we have our candidates. Now the compute and compare we're going to do all at once. And here's what's going on with that. I take my candidates, these are the x values that the absolute maximum value might occur, 
and I plug them into the original function because I want to know their y values. In other words, I would really like to know what's that y value, what's that y value, and what's that y value. Of those three y values, one of them is going to be the biggest or the absolute maximum. Now it's important to realize I'm plugging into the original function because I want a y value of the original function. I don't plug into the derivative because I'd get a slope value. Now I've done all three of these for us because it would be quite tedious to plug those values into this function. Don't worry when you're doing this in a real scenario, it would have to be reasonable to plug those in, or at least what the AP thinks is reasonable. So by plugging these in, I now have the different y values. In my head, I now know that this is the absolute maximum value. Good try, negative 4. Good try, x equals negative 3. But x equals 5 led to the maximum value for this function. So I look, looked at my candidates. I computed and I compared their y values. Now I must conclude, which is just writing out my answer. And here we go. The absolute maximum value is 27 and a sixth. So I'm done, but I want to show you a trap. Some people will write this, not you. Of course, you wouldn't do this, but somebody you know might do this. Instead of writing this good answer, they would say something like, the absolute maximum value of f of x is 5. That's not true. The absolute maximum value of 27 and a sixth occurred at x equals 5, but this is the x value at which we got the maximum y value. So don't write this. That would be wrong. Sometimes they will ask you a question like, at what x value does the maximum value occur? In which case, we wouldn't answer with the y value. We would say the absolute maximum value of f of x occurs at x equals 5. And it led to a y value of 27 and a 6. So be sure to follow the CCCC with very clear, organized work. If you do this, you're going to get all the credit available on the rubric. If you don't do this, if you try any shortcuts, there's a very good chance that you won't get credit for all of the points that you really deserve to get. Hey, it was shorter than the first video, huh? See ya.